Well, thank you very much uh, again for being here. Um, members of the media, fellow observers, citizens of Zimbabwe. Today I'm here as a fellow African and a friend to Zimbabwe as the country seeks to consolidate its democratic values. The same values held dear by the Commonwealth, peace, democracy, the rule of law, and good governance. It's an honor for me to chair the Commonwealth Observer Group, to witness voting to elect councillors, members of parliament, and a president on the 23rd of August this year. Our 14-member observer group was constituted by the Commonwealth Secretary General, the Right Honorable Patricia Scotland, KC, following an invitation from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Trade of Zimbabwe. Members have been drawn from across the Commonwealth, representing a diversity of expertise and experience, including experience in law, in politics, in election administration, in human rights, in media, and civil society. The group is supported by a staff team from the Commonwealth Secretariat that's led by Joshua Setipa, Senior Director of the Strategy, Portfolio, Partnerships, and Digital Division. I'm sure I speak for all of us when I say that we've been warmly welcomed since our arrival in this beautiful, historic land. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commonwealth has remained a supportive partner in Zimbabwe's democratic journey since its independence in 1980. This will be the second successive observer group to witness the country's harmonized election since Zimbabwe left the Commonwealth in December of 2003. Since then, and throughout this period, the Commonwealth has continued to foster and nurture people to people linkages. We recognize the significance of these elections for the people of Zimbabwe, for the region, and for the global community. We are honored to be part of this important democratic process. The Commonwealth Observer Group has no executive role. Its function is not to interfere with, but to observe the process as a whole, and to make recommendations accordingly. We will observe the pre-election environment, polling day activities, and the post-election period. In particular, we will consider whether the conditions exist for critical elections, including a fair election environment, whether public media has been impartial, the transparency of the entire process, whether voters are free to express their will, and whether the counting and results process is transparent. We will then report on whether the elections have been conducted in accordance with the standards to which Zimbabwe has committed itself, including its national law, regional and international commitments. In conducting our duties, we will be guided by the principles of neutrality, of impartiality, of objectivity and of independence. As we are here in our individual capacities, as responsible and experienced Commonwealth citizens, our assessment will be our own and not that of any member of government. Over the coming days, we'll be meeting stakeholders, including government representatives, political parties, security agencies, civil society groups, citizen and international observer groups, diplomats, and the media. From the 21st of August, we will deploy our observers across various parts of Zimbabwe to observe the voting, counting, and results management process, as well as meet with other stakeholders in respective locations. On election day, we will observe the opening, voting, closing, counting, and results processes. We will issue an interim statement on our preliminary findings on the 25th of August before members of the group depart Zimbabwe on the 29th of August. Ladies and gentlemen, a final report will then be prepared and submitted to the Commonwealth Secretary General and subsequently shared with relevant stakeholders and made publicly available. Friends and colleagues, it's my hope that our presence here in Zimbabwe 
affirms the unwavering support of the Commonwealth to this country and its democratic processes. We call on all political parties and their supporters to uphold standards for credible, inclusive, and transparent elections, and we encourage all citizens to play their part by ensuring that a peaceful and credible process takes place next Wednesday. I'd like to thank you very, very much for your presence here. And I'll probably just read out the names of the observers. Um, so my name is Amina Mohammed. I am the chairperson of the Commonwealth Observer Group. We have with us Honorable Phil McMurdo. Um, he's a barrister and former judge of the Supreme Court of Queensland uh, in Australia. Honorable Pelonomi Benson, who I'm sure you probably know, the former Minister of Foreign Affairs of Botswana and journalist. Uh, Lomsebo Lamini, gender and human rights expert. I'm still learning how to pronounce the, <laughs> the name. Uh, from Eswatini. Uh, His Excellency Dr. Mohamed Ibn Shambas, former UN Special Representative for the Secretary General for West Africa and the Sahel from Ghana. Uh, Professor Trevedi, Commonwealth Special Envoy for SDG Implementation, Professor at Management Development Institute of India. Dr. Nassim Zaidi is the former Chief Election Commissioner of India. Ambassador Alun Ndobata Samba, former Jamaica High Commissioner uh, to the UK and former politician in Jamaica. Uh, Ms. Patterson is journalist and former editor in chief of the Gleaner in Jamaica. Uh, Dr. Samuel Ole Amse, President of the Association for Local Authorities in Namibia and former Mayor of Bujo in Namibia. Ambassador Julius Peter Moto is former Uganda High Commissioner to the UK. Um, he is from Uganda. Baroness Dennis Patricia Kingsmill is member of the House of Lords, Labour Peer, United Kingdom. Brian Hunter Spears, past president, Commonwealth Lawyers Association, UK. Uh, Criticals Patrick Mshindano is the former Chief Elections Officer at the Electoral Commission of uh, Zambia. And you can see, as I said, uh, that it's a group that has experience, expertise across a section of the areas that are relevant the conduct of elections. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I, would like, I would now like to invite questions from the media. If you could state who you are and what media house you belong to, and then uh, we will direct our questions for you. Thank you. Are there any questions? Mm -hmm. Uh, how important is this uh, mission when you take into consideration with the ongoing process by Zimbabwe uh, seeking a readmission into the country? Uh, well, I think that uh, this indicates our uh, continuous support uh, for democratic processes in uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, I think you all know that we've been engaging uh, the government of Zimbabwe and all the stakeholders. Um, uh, that have uh, either you know, uh, expressed interest in talking to us or that we have met. When we came to Zimbabwe, we've had three missions from the Commonwealth uh, that has come to Zimbabwe and have those discussions. I think that there's an interest on both parts, on the part of the um, government and people of Zimbabwe and on the part of the Commonwealth uh, that Zimbabwe are rejoining the family of the, of the Commonwealth. Uh, but I think the two processes are not linked. Mm. Uh, they are separate processes. We are here at the invitation of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, and International Trade <coughs> to witness uh, the elections, to observe the elections in, uh, in Zimbabwe. Uh, the other process uh, will continue as it has uh, been doing. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to check if there is anything of concern uh, that you have picked so far, either through the press or anyone else that you would like uh, to share with us? Well, we've started our conversations and we haven't finished them. Um, uh, you know, so I think it will be premature to make any uh, comments right now. Um, you will obviously uh, see our observations. Uh, you will see our recommendations in the preliminary report that we will uh, release on the, on the 25th. Uh, but as you know, we will be meeting, and as I indicated, 
would be meeting a cross-section of stakeholders um, from government, uh, from the government of Zimbabwe, representatives, political parties, uh, to the media, uh, to uh, different uh, organisations, civil society organisations, and, and so forth and so on. And so, uh, from those conversations, obviously, we will understand what the concerns, especially of the citizens of Zimbabwe, you know, are. And uh, in accordance with that, uh, we will monitor the elections and provide uh, recommendations at the end of the exercise. Thomas Mabriku, freelance. Uh, do you think we have enough time to, to get the information on the pre-election environment uh, that you came uh, just a, a few days before the elections? Do you think we will be able to measure the level of fairness uh, in the pre-environment pre elections? Well, we were here now. Our team arrived uh, around the 15th of this month. Uh, they have already been uh, you know, uh, moving around uh, you know, the city. Uh, we are talking to stakeholders, as I said. We're meeting with other observers as well. Uh, we will deploy on the 21st, and between now and the 21st, we'll be having these conversations uh, that I referred to with different uh, uh, members of the uh, you know, Zimbabwean uh, uh, nation. And, um, and I think that uh, we, have, we have adequate time. We have, obviously, um, a very, very group, a good group of experienced um, uh, you know, observers. And I think that we will have the time that we need to observe and to make the recommendations that are required moving forward. Godwin, your added to this question is, do uh, you have enough personnel to deploy in all the countries 210 constituencies in order to get a full appreciation of what's happening? I think the intention uh, that we have is not to deploy across the whole continent. Uh, and the whole country, sorry. Um, it is to, to make sure that the, the quality uh, that we have is reflected in the manner in which we monitor the, the elections. And so we will uh, uh, be deploying again on the 21st of, uh, of this month. Uh, we'll deploy in the areas that we feel we need to deploy. Um, on the, on the, on the, in the other areas, we will be having conversations with the other observers that are here already. Uh, and that will be observing across the, the country. Um, but I think that uh, the quality of our recommendations, the quality of uh, the observer mission uh, speaks, speaks for itself. Any other questions? <coughs> Sorry, uh, my name is Kudzai Nawashe. I'm a field journalist. Uh, I wanted to seek clarity. Uh, you mentioned this process is separate from the re-engagement uh, uh, process. But um, the outcomes of this process, will they influence uh, whether we bring uh, Commonwealth or not? First. It's well, not the first time we're here. We're here in 2018 as well. Pardon? We're here in 2018 as well and observed the elections then uh, and issued a report and recommendations. So we will do exactly the same thing this time, uh, this time around. Um, you know, we actually hope uh, that uh, uh, Zimbabwe's re-entry into the Commonwealth uh, will not be long in, in coming. As I said, we've had three missions here. We have engaged quite uh, successfully with all parts of the Zimbabwean society. And so we're looking forward when, to when Zimbabwe rejoins the, uh, the, the Commonwealth. But again, the two uh, processes are separate. Uh, they are not linked. We had the invitation of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation. <coughs> And we will do what we do in all countries uh, that we observe elections in. I'll also tell you that this is not the first country where we're observing elections that left the Commonwealth and rejoined later. Uh, I think a good example is Maldives, where we observed the elections uh, in uh, 2016. 2019, they left in 2016, we observed the elections in 2019. Uh, by 2020, they were back uh, in the family of, uh, of the Commonwealth. Uh, you know, so it's not the first time. and. Uh, and we're looking forward to the day when Zimbabwe rejoins uh, the, the Commonwealth. Again, our, our motto is to make sure that uh, we are uh, independent, we are objective, we are impartial and we are neutral. So, a year ago, but to share with us perhaps three or two uh, key highlights of your recommendations from 2018 after your observations. Um, we can we can uh, do that, but I would really like to focus on uh, these elections 
and the uh, business that we are here to, uh, to, to conduct. I think that when we issue our preliminary report on the 25th of, of, uh, of this month, I will be able also uh, to answer that question, um, you know, the recommendations that we made then and what we feel about them. Uh, but right now, I think we want to just focus on the mission that is at hand, on the mandate that we have. And if I could just add to that, I'd be happy to share a copy of the report with you um, afterwards, the, the 2018 report. Yeah. Would that be, would that be okay, that we share the report with you? Yeah, I, I meant the 2018 Yes, 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 we'll provide that report. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Any questions? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Actually, yes, there's a comment here that, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the gender representation is quite... Uh, <laughs> 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 it's negative. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.